Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. The Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. But we are rejoined by the play-by-play voice of the Commanders, Mr. Bram Weinstein. How are you doing on this fantastic Monday evening, sir? Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great, Bram. And the title of this episode is called The Rose Garden for a reason. I like to look at Terry as a kind of a rose in the desert. But at this point, after this team has re-signed Logan Thomas, Chase Rouillet, they've gotten, uh, obviously, Terry McLaurin Inc. and Jonathan Allen. How confident, confident in you are you in this Rose Garden gr- growing? I mean, I, I think we have a lot of interesting pieces. And I think they've got a lot of very tough decisions coming. Um, I think we all knew it when they drafted all four of those defensive linemen back to back to back to back. And that well, you knew from the get go that it was going to be hard to pay all of them. Um, and then there are people like Antonio Gibson and Cole Holcomb and Cam Curl that are all coming up too. So I'm confident, but I don't think we're going to get everybody done. And it'll be interesting to see what selections they make between that group. Yeah, right. And we, you mentioned the defensive line. One of the picks that I think everybody at first people seem kind of sour on, but it, it makes sense if you think about it. The Federian Mathis acquisition. What kind of role do you think he's going to play? Like, do you think that they are prepping him to possibly take over for Deron Payne? Or do you think that the, strictly they're going to have this as a rotation? I think it's hard to know at this point. Right. Um, I Darian tried to Mathis, get you. I mean, <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's hard to know because I don't know if he's going to play like a pure nose tackle. Right which Payne is not, and really Allen is closer to, but is not. So if he develops into that, then I think he's a rotational piece for packages. And if he's not that, and we'll know more in camp and preseason and all that type of stuff, um, then maybe he is a potential replacement. Yeah. I mean, I think we all kind of know that them resigning Payne is, feels unlikely to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I, I think I have a hard time seeing it just based on how they're, talking about it not because they don't want them but because there's just only so many re-signings they're going to do so Payne's going to play out this contract we'll see what kind of year he has and we'll see how they feel about it in the offseason yeah Yeah, definitely agree with that and obviously the big signing the big re-signing this offseason was Terry and finally he has another hopefully everyone stays healthy he has another supporting cast around him in the offense finally who do you think is more important to this offense this season? Curtis Samuel, barring that he's like healthy for 14, 15 games, whatever it may be, or the rookie Jahan Dawson? Uh, that's another one. It's tough to know until <laughs> I see them in training camp. You know, right. like I need to see how they're going to use these guys. I, I think that's one of the biggest question marks is what kind of offense are they running? Like right. they a lot of speed yep. pieces, a lot of versatile pieces. I don't know what their offense is going to look like. So it's hard to answer that. With Terry back, I mean, I think he's clearly the number one receiver for them. And if Samuel's healthy, I see him in a much more versatile role than Dotson. So I think largely because of experience and because of the many different places they can put him on the field, that Samuel should be a bigger contributor immediately. Um, That said, I love the idea if Samuel is truly healthy of the type of versatility and speed that they have. So hopefully as the weeks go by, they'll all get their turn. One ball, though, that's the problem. One ball. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And then over social media today, Bram, it got taken by wayside that the fact that Carson Wentz is meeting up with the newly re-signed Terry McLaurin. Looks like Jahan Dodson's out there, Cole Turner and others. What was your reaction to seeing that just based off Terry signing a deal and then immediately going to, to actually meet up with his quarterback? Isn't that awesome? It's great. I mean, I think McClure has been professional throughout this whole thing. I understand why he wanted to get paid and I don't blame him. Um, And, you know, this team needs him badly in so many ways, like not just on the field, but just who he's been, leadership qualities, face of the franchise, a rebrand, working, you know, work ethic, culture, like he, he's everything for them. Um, and so I'm not surprised by this. I mean, you read that letter that he wrote to everybody after he signed the contract. I mean, the, 
the dude's gold, man. You know, like, <laughs> we can't replace somebody like that. And so I think it's, I'm not surprised by this. And to me, the other side of it really is it's so much that I'm surprised that McLaurin did it. I'm glad to hear Wentz is doing this because after everything that we heard about him, you know, coming into this about relating to teammates and leadership and all that stuff, I think the headline here is that he, he's gone out of his way and realizes this might be his last real shot as a starting franchise quarterback. And he clearly is taking that very, very, very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of Carson Wentz, I mean, that segues perfectly. What do you think is a successful season for him? I know we have a lot invested of him in him uh, monetarily, especially this season. Um, what do you think it's going to take for them to keep him past year one? Record wise, stats wise, doesn't matter. So, you know, I, I think um, that's hard to answer to. Right. You okay. know, because I, I don't know if you guys watched him last year with yeah. the Colts, but I've been doing a lot of that, you know, this offseason <laughs> since they acquired him. And he is going to have to make a lot better decisions. Yeah. Um, he can't put them in the type of situations that he put Indianapolis in. He can be loose with the football in non-scripted plays where plays break down. He is apt to make some questionable decisions and sprain so, both ankles on one play. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's acting like Pat Mahomes when you're not Pat Mahomes. Right. <laughs> It's, it's a little of that. And then, but I will say this, like when you watch him in the intermediate game, like scripted plays, pre-snap decision, three to five step drop, he is excellent. I mean, like top tier excellent. And mm. I believe I've gotten some pushback on social media about saying this, but I believe this team has a better collection of skill position players than the Colts did a year ago. Oh, yeah. I don't even understand you how it's like the, debatable. Well, I, I, I guess more, I, Jonathan Taylor might be the best running back in the NFL. Well, yeah, yeah so, but, uh, I mean, aside so, from that guy, from that right. huge thorn. But. No, I, I'll take our receiver group and, easily. You know, Logan Thomas healthy over that receiver group and tight end all day. Right. So I'm hoping that there's more separation, there's more opportunity. But to me, the key. To me early one we his confidence is in question for sure you know this has been an interesting year plus for him um he went from being you know five years ago a almost surefire mvp candidate before he gets hurt and his team goes and wins the super bowl to being on a third team and questioned about leadership and whether he's got the right mindset and so they gotta get his confidence back and to me the easiest way to do that at least from what i saw was can you get him in a position to make decisions very quickly where plays don't break down and force him to make decisions on his own and get some confidence going and then maybe open up the playbook for the slower developing plays as things go. I think he's got enough speed and options where I think they can help him get his mojo back. And if that happens, I think you're going to see some success on the field. So I don't know what the record looks like or all that, but I do think, Key number one, and maybe the biggest thing that they have to get back around to is he needs to become a confident player again. Yeah. And I'm hoping that they kind of, you know, baby step him into that early in the season, especially with what looks like weaker competition early. Yeah. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Hopefully Scott Turner can kind of settle him down and just get him right mentally and uh, get out there, and get out on the field and produce. And speaking of produce, Jonathan Allen is a guy that, Highly produced last year for this team after getting the contract, kind of became that breakout player for this team. Who do you think is going to be that breakout player for this team this year, if any? On defense? Either side of the ball. So, it doesn't really matter. So I um, I personally think they ought to um, extend Cole Holcomb immediately and not let him get to the open market because I've seen a massive – uptick in his play oh yeah and if he is successful at middle linebacker they're not gonna be able to afford him in free agency and if he isn't a great answer at middle linebacker i still think he's a member of your team at the weak side linebacker right. so i think they should extend him and i would expect this being a very big year for him that i don't know if breakout's the right word i thought he was terrific last year but right. he may get more notoriety if this defense plays like I think the way we think it can play. He may get some more notoriety for that, especially if he really handles the middle 
differently than it was handled a year ago. Right. And real fast, Bram, it seems like the team's kind of taking notice of that. I mean, if you've noticed, they've been pushing Cole Holcomb a lot this offseason, like putting him on the front of tickets or yeah. all sorts of different articles and stuff. So that's been cool. I think you're right. Yep. You know, they, they, he and Cam Curl are very interesting players yeah. to watch this year. They, like Montez Sweat, are heading into situations where they're going to start talking contracts. It's just my opinion on Holcomb and maybe Curl that because they're, you know, lower round draft picks, they're not making a lot of money right now, you might be better served getting a deal done with them now and not letting them get anywhere near free agency where you don't know what the market's going to look like. Absolutely. Now, Bram, to wrap up this interview, we only have a couple more questions for you. But the Washington Commanders came out with their celebrating their 90 year anniversary, and they got the 90th anniversary patch that they just came out with for all three different uniforms. Then they also came out with the 90 greatest players of the franchise history. So first, what was your reaction to the patches? Do you like those? And then secondly, who would get, be getting your selection? Uh, I love the patches. I think they look good. Um, I love the kind of nod to DC with the square on its side. Yeah. And um, it looks good to me. Um, as for the players, I'm glad the fans got angry and got Trent Williams added to the list because I thought that was a massive oversight. I do not agree with the outrage over RG3. I have no idea, Agreed. personally, why he is included in one of the in the list of greatest players in the organization's history. He's one of the most famous ones. I don't know if he, he's nowhere near one of the greatest ones. Right. So I don't totally get that. I think there's a few obvious ones for me, like – I think Ryan Kerrigan should be in. Yeah. That's a good that's a good one. You know, who else am I missing? There are a couple obvious choices. Santana Moss, I think, is an obvious choice. Yeah. I think Chris Cooley is an obvious choice because not only just because of how long he played here and how well he played here, but his uh, you know, being in the broadcast booth, being in the media ecosystem for so long, I think that deserves it. Torgy Torgerson was here for 40 years. Like I don't know how you don't, even if it's a lifetime achievement award, put him in. <laughs> on something like this. And then the others are kind of up for debate. And we had a good one on my radio show today. I, I think Chad Bailey's a hall of famer. I, yeah. I don't know how he, even if he left wanting to leave, I don't know how you don't put him in as one of the greatest players to come through here. He's one of the greatest cornerbacks ever. Especially so, if they put RG three on there. I know different positions, but like one season, Chad Bailey's at least a yeah. hall of famer and was great for us. Yes. I think Champ Bailey's the only, if I remember right, he's the only player on that list that's currently in the Hall of Fame. Mm. I think Trent Williams will be one day, yeah. but he's not currently. I would put Champ Bailey in, and then you'll have to remind, oh, I think London Fletcher's a, a shoe in too for that. Oh, I mean, yeah. he, oh, he's yeah. another player should be in the Hall of Fame. I think he should be on this list too. And then I'm forgetting who else. There's an interesting debate about Cousins, honestly. Yeah. He is the, he's got the fourth most passing yards in franchise history. <laughs> he was if he had played years. out, if he had continued playing here for as long as he's played in Minnesota, he would be the number one passer in the organization's history and by a lot. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. And I how think do you include RG3? One. How do you include RG3 well, and not Kirk? Right. No, I put Cousins goes in before RG3. No, that's what, does. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I mean, people are saying that no. it's, it's ridiculous. Right. To me, RG3, RG3 going in is ridiculous. And I hope the fans yeah. don't vote that way. That's utterly ridiculous. It's and then the other one too is like, listen, I'm partial. I'm listen, I'm 49. So I'm partial to the 80s teams. Daryl World Grant is part of maybe the greatest defensive line we had. And I'm hoping this defensive line is as good as that one was. He won Super Bowls. I'd put him in. Okay. Absolutely. Now, Bram, my next question for you. A lot of the fan base has been talking. And because of the strength of schedule this season, you could say it's a lot easier than last season. A lot of people are saying that Rivera needs a successful year in order to have his job secured so he's not on the hot seat. Do you agree with that? He's talking like he needs to have his job secured. So I'm okay. listening to him about that. I will tell you, I mean, covered this team for a long time. I don't even get a whiff of him being on a hot seat whatsoever. Me either. Now, if they go, they win five games next year, I think everything's on the table. But I certainly don't expect that. And at this juncture, I don't think this is make or break. And I think everybody is going to be level-headed enough to go, I don't think this is a Super Bowl team. But I do think this is a playoff team, and if they don't make the playoffs, that will be an interesting discussion for sure. This is a weaker conference this year. I think the way Dallas has kind of, at least on paper, looks weaker than they were last year, I think the door is wide open for this team to be 
either the winner of the NFC East or a second place team, either behind Dallas or Philadelphia. Absolutely. If it happens, that should be playoffs for them. And if yeah. they don't make the playoffs, I think we're going to have some interesting discussions. But short of them totally bottoming out, I really don't feel. Totally agree with him there. Totally agree with you there, Bram. Uh, before we get you back here, hopefully I have one more question for you, but it looks like your internet went out. Are you there yet? I'll uh, go ahead. What do you there, got? There you go. There you go. My bad. Last one for you. What your, what's your biggest question heading into training camp, it, either based on position or it can just be on one side of the ball? Ooh, I got a few of them. I really think that we talked about this already. I think it's Wentz. Okay. Like, is he going to be a competent quarterback again? That's that's really my biggest question, and I hope for sure that he is. You know, I think they, they're going to have a different outcome if he is. And then, you know, honestly, like, collectively, I think the defense – has a lot of explaining to do from a year ago Mm. and the schedule sets up for them specifically early to get off on the right start and show. I still believe as good as like, I think that they've upgraded their offense with Wentz and Dotson, you know, I got some questions about the interior offensive line for sure that, you know, considering that flowers and sheriff are both gone. I got some questions about that, but I think this team still in my mind, goes as far as the defense and specifically that line takes them. So they start playing like they did two years ago. I'm going to feel real good about where this team is going. They look like they did at the early part of last year, starting this year. I'm going to have some grave concerns about where things go. I'm right there with you, Bram. I can't thank you enough for taking some time out for us on your drive home. Continue to drive safe, sir. Until next time, I really appreciate you taking time out, brother. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. Take care. Appreciate Thanks, it. Bram. Enjoy your night, brother. Yeah, this guy's Thanks. hard, man. On the radio and then coming on for an interview with the pod, man. <laughs> somebody, somebody while driving. Yeah, somebody, somebody call the police. Come on, let's yeah. get this. And speaking of while driving, so it looks like the Jets fan base has decided that you know to bring a grenade to the situation to give notoriety <laughs> to Zach Wilson. And you believe this, Reed? Can you explain for everybody what is going on with Zach Wilson? So Zach Wilson, old BYU Mormon Zach Wilson, number two overall pick for the New York football jets uh no he him and uh dax milney they went to college together they were roommates are good friends growing up i mean he was his wide receiver one zach wilson was a quarterback and uh zach wilson was dating a girl for a very long time very very long time they're very serious remember he's mormon he takes this thing very serious usually he can have multiple wives i think that's how that works with them but i'm not sure he wasn't he was a single man kind of guy but uh anyway it turns out everybody just thinks he's some little homie that who's uh you know just a mama's boy Turns out he is a mama's boy, but he's a mama's friend's boy. And uh, he was uh, porking his mom's BFF and cheated on his girl. And now his girl is dating his best friend, Dax Milne. And it's just, it's awesome. Like, you can't ask for better drama. Like, this should be on a Netflix show. And, of course, it has to do with the commanders. The commanders are tied well, Why wouldn't it? We, we can't Dax get Milne. one up. Yeah. So, basically, what happened was this was all found out through Instagram, so through social media, because... Zach Wilson's ex-girlfriend posted a picture with Dax Milne because they are now dating. Uh, yep. And, so, and it, the caption said some nuts, too. That was like, yeah, obviously, so it did. all the Jets fans started going after her for leaving Zach Wilson. And she basically responded, well, I, you know, I l- left him because he was hooking up with his mom's best friend. And so everyone's like, oh, he's a dog. You know, he's a dog. And look, got that look dog in I it. understand. Yeah, cool, though. I understand that it is cool. kind of cool, but I find it very very hard to believe. I think what we're going to end up finding out is oh, that they just hung out a lot no, and all they did no. was drink wine and watch Grey's Anatomy together. I don't no, think no, that no. this dude, this dude last season no. was was mm. driven to training camp in a minivan. Didn't even sit in the front seat. Yeah, sat in he the was, back. He was putting work in, my guy. That's what he does. With his family? Yeah, with his mom's best friend. He was trying his, to get a good word in His mom's best friend was not there. I watched the video. It doesn't matter. He was trying to get in good with oh, my. He was just the girl that he was trying to get with his best friend, which just so happens which just so happens to be his mom. Okay, <laughs> You're telling me the franchise quarterback who's supposed to be the man among men of the greatest athletes in the world gets dropped off at training camp in his minivan by his parents, and yeah. we're sitting here assuming that this dude is Joe Namath? Come on, yeah, man. No, he's cooler hey, than Joe Namath. One, one year in New York yeah. can do that to you. No, like and I on top of that, Kyle, do you, Kyle, all Mormons, that's like their thing, is like having <laughs> multiple girls at one time. Google it. They're like... Yeah, like at their renovating houses show, like they'll be like saying something and then like they'll be like, honey, dinner's ready. They'll like pop out of the cabinets or like, you know, there's like a bunch of them. So I'm just I think that he thought it was okay. If that dude can't even command the front seat in his own vehicle with his family, 
I highly doubt that that dude's going to command hey, the title. Doesn't of... doesn't matter when you got that much dough, Playboy. I don't know, man. That's just a weird situation. I don't believe it at all. What about you, Hall? I mean, yeah, I believe it. I yeah. mean, clearly Dax Mill is it. dating his ex girlfriend. So, like, if that half of it is true, why wouldn't the other half of it be true? Yeah. Dude, the funny part of yep. the funny thing that you sent was uh, somebody <laughs> had said that this is the first time the Jets have scored over 40 in like yeah. 30 years. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty good. It's the first yeah. time they've scored over 40 since 2018. Yeah, that's really I thought good. that was hysterical. Did you yeah, see? I uh, wanted to ask your get your opinion on this, Hall, because everyone's slipping out on social media because Curtis Samuel was not there in California with everyone else. I went working out with Carson Wentz, Terry McLaurin, and Taylor Heineke. You flipping out about that? No, I'm not flipping out about that. I mean, obviously, I saw people commenting underneath the photo, like, where's Curtis? People quote tweeting it like, well, who's that one guy that's missing? Well, there wasn't – every receiver wasn't out there with them. It was like Cam Sims, Dax Milne, Terry, Jahan Dotson, Cole Turner. Where was the other 90-man roster? Never, not everyone was out there. So, like, why does it matter if Curtis Samuel was out there or not? And at the end of the day, he was in many camps getting the chemistry with Carson. He was in OTAs getting the chemistry with Carson. What is, uh, like, a couple days out in California? I mean, obviously, it's like a bonding thing, but they got training camp coming up for, like, the next two, three weeks and a couple weeks here. So, he can get that bonding, that chemistry during practice, after practice with Kim, uh, with Carson. So, not worried about it. Not a big deal. But I want Curtis Samuel healthy for week one, coming out there to fry up the Jaguars in week one. Yeah, but it's not like Curtis Samuel knew when the deal was going to get done and when Terry was going to go out and play and throw the football around with Carson Wentz. Like, who, like who's saying that Curtis Samuel didn't have, a, like, a vacation scheduled for this exactly. week? He could and it's be like, out of the country right now. Like. Right. And, like, that's my whole thing is, like, I understand what the mindset is because they're saying we paid a bunch of money to this guy. We haven't seen him very much. He was injured last season, and he's not out there getting – acclimated with his teammates i get the sentiment behind it but let's be real guys calm down everything is okay curtis team is going to be just fine and i'm sure there's a very good reason for why he's not there and if that comes comes down to him his personal choice that is valid enough reason for him not to go it is not a, not a reason for you to flip out and like start claiming that you know curtis samuels are falling out like yeah. aren't him and terry like best friends yeah, yeah him and terry yeah. best friends so like mm -hmm. and look the dude's about to like literally in a couple weeks He's about to start work for hopefully from now until right through January and possibly into February. Who knows if everything goes right? We'll see. But definitely into January. So it's like if he wants to spend some like free time and like do his own thing before he actually has to go in and punch the clock for the next six, seven, eight months, whatever it may be. I'm completely fine with that. Wait, so Curtis and Terry, they're best friends. I wonder if uh, if Curtis would bang Terry's mom's best friend or something <laughs> and then Terry would bang. No, but you know how it is. it's a, it's the slow season, man. People are going to make something out of it. Anytime somebody doesn't show up somewhere that's not mandatory, it's the biggest deal in the world. It always ends up being fine. It'll be all right. I know we, we wondered when, when whenever Terry's contract is going to be done, we wondered what people would, would complain about at that point. What is there to complain about? <laughs> well, apparently it's the 90th anniversary patches and it's the the players that were put in there. I mean, they were there were people like Jake Russell putting out Twitter about like the misspelling of the names and stuff like that, and like the wrong pictures being used. And like, are you are you, what a loser? Right. I mean, like, I mean, are we, <laughs> I mean, if look, we're, if we're being honest, like this is what you look forward to in your day. Whenever the commanders come out with something, you look for mistakes. Like, imagine being that intern. Being like, yeah, so just to let you know, all the hate that's against the Snyder organization and everything, so when you get put on this, there's going to have a bunch of people, like a zombie horde, coming after every quite possible mistake you could put in there. It's ridiculous, yeah. man. Hey, look, I get people being upset about that because that's the stuff that you can control. That's like everyone always says you got to make your layups. That's like a layup. Like It doesn't take a whole lot of time to double-check something post it, copy and paste it onto a website. Oh, let me fix that. Let me fix that. So I definitely get people being upset, but like the people that just, like you said, just wait for every single thing the commanders drop and they're going to nitpick it and like be negative about it. Even if it's a good thing, they're going to find something negative about the situation. Those are the people where it's just like, like you said, get a hobby, like do something else with your day other than keep refreshing Twitter feed. They're like, Oh, what are the commanders supposed? What are the commanders supposed? Like there's other things in life other than commanders supposed. Come yeah. On. I even saw headlines was like, can the commanders do anything right? Or can yeah. this franchise do anything right? And like, I get it. And like, I'm, I understand that you should have those expectations and you should be 
But like we're like asking the commanders to be what our government is supposed to be. You know, like you should have all your eye, your eyes dotted and your T's crossed, right? And like, but the thing is with the commanders, they're ran by people. And I'm glad to hear that because we are all humans. We make mistakes. And I understand at a certain point you cannot make mistakes. But it, if anything was going to go down, I'm okay with that because it's an easy fix. It's not like it's something that's going on the jersey or like there's something that's going to halt production. This is something on a website they can fix in five seconds. And I understand that. And I get that whole mindset being that they should have seen that in the first place. The fact being is they're human and people make mistakes. It's okay. This isn't a, oh. this isn't a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> not all right to be human these days dude it's 2022 all right you gotta yeah, it's ridiculous i don't understand it but i like anything that they do anything it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter what they put out it that somebody's gonna find something wrong with it and it's gonna go viral on, on washington twitter and it's gonna cause a big deal and people are gonna somehow blame jason wright and say ron needs to be fired because of it and curtis samuel's always injured and they're gonna be like what are you why what it's a letter what are you doing it just <laughs> happens all the time Watch. It'll happen two more times before camp begins. Yes. Yeah, so and now let's move on to our fan questions to wrap up this episode. We were going to interview Coach Greg Curl again, um, but unfortunately his car like exploded. It's not working right now. So he has to get it with towed him to inside. Shop. No, okay, uh, I, I worded that terribly. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was like, that's not like, what? news to drop no, right now. No, dude. but so I was really looking forward to coach getting on here, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to, which is unfortunate because I love talking to coach. Man. He oh, I love, I fun. love Greg. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Let's get the first question from the Colonel, Reed. I'm going to go to you with this. I completely agree with your last discussion comparing Baker Mayfield to Carson Wentz. However, in the crazy 2022 quarterback sweepstakes, who would you rather have signed, Carson or Matt Ryan? And he's saying, I'm not necessarily comparing, but the absurd notion that we would have been better off with Baker is ridiculous, essentially. So, who would you rather have signed, if we're straight up talking about it, Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan for this football team? So, I think it's interesting because i think both teams kind of got who they should get like it fits we need somebody with a strong arm. we just went through taylor heineke we need somebody who can push the ball downfield who will take some chances who can use his legs colts need somebody who can sit there doesn't have to have the strongest arm but he's got to be smart he's got to handle both so i would take carson uh, i'm sure they would take matt ryan and hey it all ended up working out because i think it's ideal for both yeah i think you hit the nail right on the head I think yeah no i know i did though. summarized yeah. it perfectly because i think the colts getting matt ryan is actually a good move And I think Washington getting Carson Wentz is a good move just because the quarterbacks are built for those type of schemes. The Colts want to be able to be run heavy and then supplement it with play action, kind of like what they did with Phillip Rivers, right? And that's why Matt Ryan fits it perfectly because he's smart. He knows where to put the football. And it's going to transition well for them because they don't have that many wide receivers, something that Matt Ryan is used to, right? They got Michael Pittman. It's going to be an easy thing for them. For this football team, we, uh, we talked about last episode, they have three wide receivers on the roster that is very, very good at deep downfield contested catch rate. And that goes hand in hand with Carson Wentz wanting to throw the ball deep and then threading the ball in those types of scenarios where you don't would want to see it happen. Kind of like the Doug Flutie, Brett Favre aspect to it. Right. And that fits with this offense. And so as much as people would like to say Matt Ryan is a better quarterback, and I understand his career is a better overall, you could say. But he's better fit for their system, and Carson is better fit for us. Because essentially, if you were to have Matt Ryan, it's just a smarter Taylor Heineke with limited arm strength, not as much as Carson Wentz, if that makes sense. Right. Right. Um, this is a tough one for me, honestly, because I kind of I, – I, me personally, I guess I would probably say Matt Ryan just for the simple fact of – Bro, you're such a he's, hater. <laughs> I know so I was going to say. I was going to, like, chew me up in the comments. Probably, but you didn't but, know it was going to be me, your, one of your own. I was, I was kind of taken aback by that. It surprised me. But um, no, I think Matt Ryan's a better quarterback right now. Um, honestly, obviously, in Atlanta, like they haven't had like much success as far as like wins and like team wins. But personally, with what he's had to work with over the past couple of years, Matt Ryan's actually put up pretty good numbers and for them been a pretty decent quarterback. Obviously, Carson Wentz is younger, so that's there's always that aspect of it. But I just think that, and also. Matt Ryan's a good a guy that's going to definitely uh, put more work into kind of helping Sam Howell come along. I, I, he's a fifth round pick, so you're not really expecting much. But say they had drafted a second round quarterback or a third round quarterback, because a guy like Matt Ryan, obviously he's on the back nine of his career. You probably would have drafted a quarterback sometime earlier in those in that round, or maybe even next year. So Matt Ryan would kind of be that tutor, the kind of the bridge guy to hand the baton off to the younger guy, and then you can just step right in and get to work. But 
at the end of the day, we have Carson, and I'm not mad that we have Carson. It's just – it's really just who you prefer. Like you said, kind of like which quarterback is, fits better in which offense. And I do think that Carson Wentz does fit better in this offense. But I just think for – as a whole, for like just the leadership aspect and just that – the locker room aspect of it, Matt Ryan has the edge on Carson Wentz. Yeah. We'll see if Carson Wentz can step up because that's been the knock on him for a while. So if Carson Wentz can kind of pick up the slack on his leadership aspect of things – then, yeah, I think Carson Wentz will be fine. I mean, I do think it will be fine anyway, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I 100% agree real fast. I do think Matt Ryan's is probably the better player, but Carson's better for us, like you said, also. Shout out to your family. And I do think it has to do with the chicken or the it. egg argument because, um, l- like, I would ask the counter argument to that is, what wide receiver has Carson Wentz had in his career that is comes up to par with Julio Jones? Right. Right. And that's really hard to be able to say anybody even comes close to that. And I understand that aspect of it, but I just want to Carson Wentz is not having a bad career in six years, in six seasons in the NFL. (laughs) Carson Wentz averages less than thirty four hundred passing yards per per season. He averages less than twenty four touchdowns per season and then under ten interceptions, nine point five interceptions per season. So by going 24 and less than nine, that is actually a really good season for a quarterback. You can Mm -hmm. say you were efficient. You were able to get the ball where it needed to be. That being said, I just feel like it's a better fit overall altogether. Thank you for the question, Colonel, because this is something that I've been wanting to get off because I feel like that's something that people were talking about saying, well, we could have had Matt Ryan, blah, blah, blah. Like, I understand that. I'm just saying that Carson is better fit for this offense and what they want to do. Also... Real quick, I the no whole notion that oh we if we would have waited we could have got Matt Ryan we could have got well first of all if you want Baker Mayfield over Carson Wentz I don't even know what your football knowledge is even talking about but the whole notion that oh if we would have waited and been patient yes. we could have got Matt Ryan well when we got Carson Wentz Deshaun Watson wasn't talking about going to Atlanta it was literally yeah. like New Orleans was like the leader of the clubhouse everybody and thought then he was it was going to Cleveland New Orleans. yeah and then like all of a sudden Atlanta just popped up overnight. So yeah. then all of a sudden it was kind of like, oh, all right, well, Matt Ryan wants to get to Indianapolis. That's where he yeah. prefers. Carson Wentz is going to shake loose anyway. Okay, cool. Let's pounce on him. So if we would have waited and kind of like did the whole musical chairs and like being patient, once that music would have stopped and we would have been sitting there with no quarterback, you don't think everyone would be going after this whole front office and coaching staff with Taylor Heineke being trotted out there in training right, camp and minicamp? Right. They had so, to be aggressive. Well, also, exactly. the, how did how did none of us know about the Cleveland situation? If you guys look in February in the city of Cleveland, thirty two massage parlors were built. So that tells you right there that's where he was going. Like we come on. <laughs> Those are the facts that we need. Those, Those are the facts, facts that we need. That we you need. guys that's just you got to follow that's the little the kind of stuff we need. Crumb trails. Yeah. There we go. Right now, let's Welcome. go to our next question from the Discord chat server. This is from our guy Jeff. Miles, what players are must-haves, Hall, in the new editions of the 90 best Washington players of all time? Hall? Mm. Hall, are you there? I was frozen. I didn't hear anything you said. Uh, Jeff Miles asked, what players are must-haves in the new editions of the 90 best Washington players of all time? What players are they? Uh... Well, yeah, we uh, kind of went over that with Bram. Um, obviously, the Iron Man, London Fletcher, got to be on there. I'm glad that the fans, like you said, made a ruckus and then they added Trent to the list because that was obviously kind of petty. They didn't put him on that list. Yeah, dumb. Um, Should have left D. Hall off. <laughs> nah, I mean, look, D. Hall, he was he was petty about the organization and everything, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But he was here for a while and played well. He was here for a while. He was a look. He did. At one point, he was playing at a pretty, yeah. not like a high level, mm-hmm. but he was playing at a – wasn't his whole career. A, t- a high level for this team, I should say, not like yeah. around the league, but yeah. – he was a team captain for this team. Like he was a locker room guy. I was very happy that he came here, but we have to be honest. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not yeah, saying he was like any. I'm not saying he's a world beater. He's, yeah. He had a couple of good years here, yeah. like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean Santana Moss, obviously guys like that, guys that are just like, guys that are still are like legends for this team, but still connected with the team. Like, like I said, the Mosses, D Hall was for a little bit, but I could exclude him off the list if you want to. London Fletcher, guys like that. So, and then of course the big one is Big Trent. Yeah, yeah, for me, uh, one of the ones I have to have on there is Mike Sellers. Absolutely. I just feel like Mike Sellers was like the epitome of like re- the Redskins the back then. You know, like just like Dude. you knew when, when Sellers he coming through the hole, was he was hitting. so terrifying. Yeah. I've never been more scared of a football. Just like if you were going to get into a fight with that guy, like, no, yeah. just go look at him. 
No, if we had him on, he was like extra, extra, like Laron Landry swole. We were like, good God. Oh, God. Yeah, I follow him on Instagram. See, look, I, I, the Trent thing, I completely understand why Trent should be on there, and I agree. Trent's one of my favorite players that's ever played here. I'd have his jersey upstairs. With everything that went on, I could understand why they would say he's in the he's in the same conference as us. We're fighting for the same team. There's no reason to be able to give him that acknowledgement, right? Because you want to k- keep that competitive aspect to it. But the fact being is they got they had Carson went uh, not Carson they had Kirk Cousins on there, so it kind of went against that whole narrative. So I can understand why they'd put him on. But I would rather just say I would leave Kirk Cousins and Trent off if that's going to be the case. You know what I mean? Just if you if they're currently playing, they don't qualify. I, I, okay. That's the way right, I would right, look right. at it. Um, yeah, yeah, I can get that part of it. Yeah. Um, so then two other, I mean, we've touched on a bunch of people, uh, but I think it would, Ryan Kerrigan, obviously he's somebody that if he, you know, but another person, I don't even know if he's on there yet. It's another uh, fellow Mormon, Chris Cooley. Is Cooley on there? Cooley, people forget Cooley was a good Ooh, tight end for a long do time. I have one. And it's Let a me hear massive it. Please one. tell me it's Fred massive. Davis. Chris Samuels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How yeah. is he not on there? Yeah, exactly. There? Chris Samuels, dude, he was literally the left tackle. The, the He guarded the for like a decade. Yeah. He was here. Yeah. And like he he's, was so good. He made us forget about left tackle. Until little known tra- fact. Uh, and you guys, trend. you guys can Google this. He's the only human being in the history of the world that can breathe through his nose that does not have a bridge on his nose. Have you seen it? It's literally flat right here in between his eyes. Completely <laughs> flat. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I swear to God, Google it. It's worth a Google. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Chris Samuels knows. I've never seen it. Now, well, let's move it. That's on to our next Google question. It. This is from Sergio Martin. Reed, I'm going to go to you with this. Do you guys believe we can get Landon Collins back once he's still on free agency? I mean, yeah, yeah, I think we can. Um, I think that the whole thing was we're waiting to get Terry done. I still think that they would like to try to make some progress with, like, see where Deron Payne's at or if they can or getting some of these other guys started. But I think Landon Collins has always been an option uh, as soon as his money came off the cap. So I think – I, I would like it. Uh, it's just going to depend on, you know, the money situation. I know that guy probably wants to get paid a little bit more than he's worth right now, but uh, hey, maybe we have to. Yeah, and this is like in that tricky area, the gray area of the offseason where, like, you don't know if teams are not calling a guy because they don't want his services or there's possibly like a money negotiation issue or if it's like a guy just wants to hang out and make his decision late. You know what I mean? Because right. I would love to sit here and say Landon could sign here at any point in time, but then somebody would argue back, well, why hasn't anyone signed him yet? Like, his, if he's that good, then, then he should be signed to a team. And I, I would I would agree with that, but maybe there is something there where Landon's saying, I want to chill out this summer, I don't want to worry about that. Once we get close to August, maybe I'll make my decision. And uh, if that's the case, and I, I do think the possibility is there just because of the depth piece. There, there, obviously, Landon Collins has a place on this team if he plays. Obviously, it comes down to the money. But I, I wouldn't shut the door just yet. It's, it's slightly open still, and I just don't think it's shut yet. What do you think, Hall? Yeah, I think that uh, he's one of those veteran players that probably is like, oh, just, I'm not really worried about many camps and OTAs, even though they're mandatory anyway, but – or involuntary like OTAs and all that. I'm not really worried about that kind of that portion of the all season workout. I think once we get a little bit closer, maybe like sometime next week, maybe the first week of training camp, I could definitely see maybe some teams starting to pick up some traction on him. But I think honestly, I think he's kind of waiting to see uh, how things play out during training camp, who's going to get injured, who's going to get cut. Yeah. And then maybe kind of wait for his agent to make a move then. So with all that being said, Barring an injury, I don't think he's going to be back in Washington. I think that uh, they pretty much moved on and they've kind of put their faith in the younger guys and want to see what they have as opposed to bringing back a guy that they know what they can get out of him. He's a great leader. That is pretty flat. That's crazy. Bro, there's nothing there in between his eyes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't think he's coming back here unless there's an injury. And hopefully there's no injury that we have here in during training camp. But – yeah, I think that uh, another team is going to pounce on him before we we get the chance to. I was wondering what you were doing, Reed. Like, what's going on? <laughs> what's he doing under there? I don't even know what he's Googling, up to. Googling now, Chris our Samuels next knows. question. Our next question is from Twitter, <laughs> and this one is from our guy Scott Hartley in the UK. Oi, oi! Looking oi. back to last season, Reed, what's your favorite play from either the offense or defense? Mm, last season, oh, that's a tough one. I mean, my favorite play. Uh, it was just because it was such a crazy circus play was uh, that Landon Collins interception that hit off Dallas Godart's uh, foot that I thought that that was just an incomplete pass that bounced off the ground and he caught it. And uh, I was like, why are you running, man? Come on, stop. Get the game going. Come on. Shoot and uh, they went back. Yeah. Then they went back and they reviewed it. And that was like just the craziest like video game almost style, like 
it's the way it fell and then how close it got to hitting the grass, but then his foot kicked it and right into Landon Collins. I was just like, that's that's good, good things happen to good people. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, dude, for me, it's really hard to be able to, to pick between these two because a part of me wants to say the Terry McLaurin snag against the Chargers on the sideline. Getting, oh, you're right. Uh, right. Terry, yeah. one, one cheek McLaurin, you know, getting that inside the sideline, mm. which was uh, we when when Hall and I watched that play happen live, we thought it was picked. Just yeah, because, like, yeah. we were looking down at the defender's back because right. the ball was coming up this way. So, like, we thought it was picked, and then they were moving the change. We're like, wait a minute, you caught that? But then the mm-hmm. other one is the J.D. McKissick touchdown uh, against the Falcons to seal the deal. I mean, that was absolutely amazing. And not even including the Terry McLaurin touchdown from that game, which was amazing in itself. It's really hard to be able to pick one, Scott. But if I had to, I'd probably say the J.D. McKissick one just because that was such a crazy play. The fact that Taylor was able to get away from the pressure, dump it off to J.D., and then yeah. from there it was a foot race. J.D. just escapes everybody. Diving in, that ball gets in to, to win that game. That was Taylor- a huge play. Taylor made a lot of crazy plays this year. Like, shout out to him because I was like, he, he did make a lot of cool ass plays. He did. Yeah, I was gonna, but I still I can't pick... take away the Cowboys game. That was that's yeah. still both games were ruined. Horrible. Ruined. Yeah. Um, I was gonna go with the JD, uh, the JD touchdown against the Falcons, but mm. my number two answer will be the Terry McLaurin catch against the Buccaneers when Taylor threw him the hospital ball and he just gets oh. smacked. Everyone just figured like everyone thought like, oh man, Terry's done like. Here goes any chance of us, like, not only winning this game, but the rest of our season. It's already been a bad season up to this point. Like, how can it get any worse? And he just gets up, kind of shakes it off, starts pounding on his chest. I mean, look, everyone knew that, like, Terry was the man, but I just feel like the rest of the league and everyone else in the league was just like, yo, that dude is that dude. is that dude." So that's got to be my play because, I mean, everyone loves Terry, so. He is him, like the commanders like to say. Absolutely. He is him. Absolutely. <laughs> now this next question is from our guy, Mike Puckett, and this is a good one. I'm going to go to you, Hall. <laughs> if you had to guess a surprise cut, who would it be? Cut as in, like, cut off the team or, like, cut in practice squad? No, like, his, he's got great abs. Like, he's just, like, you <laughs> yeah. wouldn't expect it, but he's very cut. <laughs> cut? Like, steak? Yeah, cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's say cut. I was, I'll say uh, squad, it, honestly, say it, a surprise cut would most likely be a veteran who wouldn't qualify for practice. That's what squad, I'm saying. So. So, I got one. Yeah, you go. I'm gonna think about like, this for a I'm, second. Again, I don't know if this will happen. I think right now he's probably gonna start, but I'd say maybe Trey Turner. You don't look. Trey Turner's a possibility. He came in here late. I think Andrew Norwell makes it. Maybe one of these young guys comes in, uh, like a Wes Schweitzer. Maybe he wins a okay. starting job. Maybe, uh, you know, Sadiq Charles finally comes out. Or maybe what Lake Lewis said is true. And maybe they bump Cosme inside and they got something. So, I don't know. I could see it happening. I doubt it. But who knows? I'm All not right. really I sure. A, su- a surprise cut. I, I, Because I, I don't want to pile on anybody, to be perfectly honest with you, just because I think everyone is capable of making the team. And the ones that you would say is a surprise cut would be somebody that I, I'm confident in. You know, like, uh, I guess you could say a surprise cut, like maybe Samus Reyes, just because of the tight end room and everything going along oh, with that. We would make a mistake. Yeah. Um, Big old thick I boy. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a surprise cut because this pretty much, it's pretty much happens like every time. You hear me? Yeah. There it time. is. Yeah. Right at this time, like, too. I know, pretty much here. It happens like every year, but I could definitely see Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Reeves getting cut and then coming back to the practice squad because right. that's, that's what, what Jeremy Reeves does. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely now this next question is from yam in japan our guy who always lets yeah. us know about our episodes appreciate you yam reed would you rather see the unexpected the expected starters play more during the preseason in general to get them more reps together against real competition or would you rather the starters barely play even a full set of downs since you know they are a lock Right. So I'm usually selfish and I'm like, I, I want to see them play. But at the same time with like Washington's injuries that have happened, like over the last years, I've kind of just been like, nah, get these guys out of here. I don't want to see anything. Happen. Like as soon as like, I like it when the starters play, but then like, as soon as you see Terry or somebody get tackled and it's like kind of awkward and you're just like, all right, get him out. He's out. No, no, no. Don't do this to him. Come on. It's a long season. They have a long time to get this going. They'll be all right. So I, I'd, I'd rather not see the starters play that much just because of that based off of our history and past luck. Uh, This is a hard question for me to answer, Yam, just because what the variable that I would have to measure here is how far along the offense or defense is in the scheme that they're running. Because if you're far away from being able to run a bunch of your plays in your playbook, then I would say, yeah, they do need to be on the field together, learning these plays and everything like that. But if they are in practice ahead of schedule with the playbook, they are 
cohesive. They're they're working together. The things are moving, gelling, and it's being smooth. I would say pull it back a little bit. There's no reason for them to play in these games. You know that they're capable of, of it, and they're translating it on the field in the small amount of time that they do have. And because the one issue that I'm worried about is that you you send them onto the field, the starters, especially the offense, and they can't do a lot of the playbook. And so you're basically you're giving your week one opponent exactly what you're going to be running in week one because they can't do all that much anyway. So for me, yeah, if they know a lot of the playbook, if they can execute a lot of the plays together, there's not a lot of hiccups, and I would say dial it back. Yeah. I Well, it depends how much you think a lot of like playing time is, but I would say – like half a quarter would for preseason games would be like a lot of playing time for the starters. So I would say, Lee, I want to at least see them play in both games. Like I don't get, really care about the Ravens game, the third game. Like that's for the fringe guys. That are like, for the birds. Kind of guys. Yeah, for the birds. No pun. <laughs> um, yeah, so like at least like a half a quarter, maybe three-fourths of a quarter in both these games. If they were going to do a joint practice with either the Panthers or the Chiefs, and I would have no problem with the starters or like not really getting any game reps because you're obviously getting uh, these reps against these teams in practice that you're scrimmaging against. But with all that being said, everyone knows they're not going 100 percent or anywhere near that for like training camp against your own teammates. So I want to see what they look like against like the live bullets, all the almost 100 percent fast play, fast, uh, fast speed on the field. So. Yeah, like maybe like a quarter or a half a quarter, three fourths of a quarter would be good with me, but. Yeah, it is what it is. Now, yeah. our last question is from Steve Lim on Twitter, a guest oh, of ours. Steve? I appreciate you, Steve. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the 90th an- anniversary patches? Apparently, some folks are up in arms about them. Reed. Yeah, no, that's one of those things where it's just like Washington fans, man. Twitter, what are you going to do? They hate everything, no matter what. I think it's kind of yeah. cool. I like it. I like the way people were hating on the way that they're designed and I get that they're, they're kind of big, but at least they made them fit with each Jersey. Like, I think it looks pretty cool the way yeah, that they did that, it. That, that's my, my point is at least they made it color coded. Like for each Jersey, right. they're going to be wearing they it. It's not one solid color. That's they had the legit up. numbers of that Jersey on them and stuff like the same fonts for everything. It's I like it. I think it's cool. It's different. I definitely think it's different. I think it's really cool too. Like, the whole thing about people saying that they shouldn't be celebrating 90 years because the new team doesn't make sense. They started out as the Boston Braves, you know, from right. Boston. So, obviously, th- there is a transition here. And as much as you guys want to make an argument that they can't celebrate the 90 years, you know, just laugh at you. Say, okay, if, pal. If we, whatever if you we say. can't celebrate well, that, they then. they can't celebrate it because this team hasn't been around for 90 years. It's been around for less than one. So Well, if we that. can't do that, then we can say, though, that we are the only NFL team to never lose a game. So, what do you guys say about Ooh, that? That's take true. that. Counterpunch. Yeah. Yeah, I like the patches. Um, I like how they explain like what everything means with the patch. Like like Brad was talking about like the uh, the square was like the shape of DC and like the, the two stars or Snyder. three stars, whatever it is, is like the DC flag and stuff like that. So patch looks cool. Definitely, like you said, I like how they uh, kind of color coded it to kind of blend in and mix up with the jerseys as well. And yeah, I mean, anyone that thinks the team hasn't been around for ninety years, like like you said. So who was the uh, who was the Braves before they were the Redskins? Like, are y'all incorporating that? Because that's part of the ninety years as well. So, just yeah. finding something to be mad at, dude. I just, love it. Just always got to be mad. Just yeah. I told you, we can win a Super Bowl thirty-four to ten, and there'd be people complaining that they scored ten points on us. Yeah, they'd be like, "Did you see Scott Turner's play calling in the red zone, though?" Like, <laughs> right. And before we uh, end this episode, boys, I just want to talk about real quick because the news came down today, which is insane. That Heinz Stadium is no longer going to be Heinz Field anymore. Not Heinz Stadium. Heinz Field. No longer going to be Heinz Field. What is it? It's going to be like AccuShore, which is like it's a like, Pittsburgh-based insurance yeah, company? Yeah. Gavin was talking about today. He was like, everyone's freaking out because they're like, no one knows how to pronounce like the name of the company that like is sponsoring <laughs> the stadium. <laughs> so I feel like it's just going to be like one of them things where like, if you live in Germantown, like, not many people watching this probably live in Germantown, but if you know about Montgomery County, Germantown, Cinnamon Woods was like a neighborhood in Germantown. They changed it to Germantown Park like almost 10 years ago at this point now. People still call it Cinnamon Woods. People are still going to call it Heinz Field at the end of the day. It is what it is. It's a historical. <laughs> that'd be like changing Lambeau Field to like Little Caesars Field Palace. in Green Bay. Little like, Caesars weird, Palace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like Cheese Curd Field. It'd be weird. So that's kind of cool. It's always going to be Heinz Field at the end of the day, but it is kind of weird that they're changing the name. What a weird name, though. I mean, AccuShore or something like that. Yeah. Like, just a, 
completely out of left field, right? Yeah. And I, I just thought it was like, it's funny as karma because Dan and, and all of them were, who are Steelers fans were making jokes about the commander's name and all the other jazz. And mm-hmm. now look at y'all. Right. Our name. Sure. Yeah. Can't even pronounce your own stadium name. I thought Ken Johansson had a perfect comeback too. He's like, but how sure are you? <laughs> I'm very, I'm accurate. That's sure, a, sure. That's a, that's a great Ken joke. It is. Ken, good Ken's one. got a good, good. Ken jokes, always, man. yeah. Ken, Ken's got good ones. Ken's got my favorite type, of humor, <laughs> to be honest. Where, uh, Ken's, got got the best dad jokes almost all, and it's always so quick, and and you'll get it. And I love that. It. It's people don't appreciate it enough. That that's an art. Getting it. That Kyle, yeah. you know, you you've recently become a father. I know. Uh, and uh, how how's dad joke telling going for you? Did it's it come naturally at first? Slow and steady, slow and steady. But it's it'll come, my son. Coming. You'll be it's all right. Coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting coming. for those events just to come naturally in front of me. I don't want to force it. You know what I mean? Those jokes are coming. They're here. But all right, everybody, that's gonna wrap us up for this show. I hope Coach Greg Curl's all good. I hope for his car gets taken care of and fixed yeah. up. We get him on here very, very soon. We hope scheduled... it didn't actually blow up like you said it did. No, yeah, I, no, and I hope I he didn't wasn't mean in that. It. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was yeah, flustered. Good. I was I was concerned about coach. I didn't know what to say. That really scared me for a second. Yeah, my heart dropped. I was like, not Greg. Because I love him. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, everybody. We're, Greg, we're gonna be back you. on Friday. Make sure you guys tune in then. Have a safe week. Enjoy your week. We will see you guys then. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And uh, I'm gonna go cry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Washington football. <laughs> Whee! Let's... Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. Don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, watching the football. Peace.